Welcome everyone. For today's prep, we're gonna be looking at a new type of function which we call exponential functions. So first let's start with the, the formula here. And as we look at this formula, I'm just gonna introduce a little bit of terminology. Maybe you've heard it before. So the general formula for an exponential function is gonna be some constant b raised to the power x. So the what we see about these exponential functions, this constant b, we call this the base term of our exponential. And it's a constant. So this b value, just a constant. Now, where our variable is, that's in the exponent position. So for an exponential function, kind of why it gets its name, the exponent, that's what's the variable. So exponential functions are a little bit unusual because the variable, the, the term where we kind of plug numbers into, that's actually in the exponent spot. If we kind of compare this to functions we've been working with so far in the class, the most common one we've seen, we call these power functions. And these are functions like g of x, x raised to the power r. So power functions, kind of what we're more used to. And again, we still have the base term and we still have the exponent spot. But now in this case, the exponent is just a constant. So in this formula, it's the constant, whatever r is. And the variable is in the base position. This is what we're used to. These are power functions. And these are different from exponentials. So power functions have the variable in the base. Exponential functions have the variable in the exponent spot. Um, now it's going to be helpful to know what these exponential functions look like. And the two most common ones that we're going to see, <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> the two most common ones that we're going to see are in the first case here. And this is the graph of b raised to the power x. And in the second case, the second graph here, this is the graph of b raised to the negative x. And for these graphs, the base term here, we're primarily going to be looking at base terms that are bigger than 1. Same thing over here. This is a base that's bigger than 1. So this is the graph of b raised to the power x, and this is the graph of b raised to the negative x. And we sometimes call this an exponential growth curve, and we sometimes call this an exponential decay curve. Now, what exponential functions all have in property, all exponential functions go through the exact same point. They cross the y-axis at the same point. And this point has coordinates 0, 1. And that's true for any type of exponential that we're going to be looking at. So in this example, this graph over here, I have four different exponential functions plotted. The flat line, this is 1 raised to the power x. This one is, I believe it's 1.1 raised to the power x. Actually, I think it's 1.2. And then this is 2 raised to the x, and this is 3 raised to the x. But regardless, all of these different exponential functions, they all go through that same point, 0, 1. And the reason for that is that we have a property that says b raised to the power 0 is equal to 1. So that's one of our special properties here. And you can see this reflected in this point. So the 0 value, that's our x-coordinate. And then the output is the y-coordinate. <clears throat> All right. So one thing that we notice on this graph is that as the base term gets bigger, the exponential curve that goes with it gets steeper. So, you know, the 
exponential curve for 2 raised to the x is not quite as steep as the exponential curve 3 raised to the x. And what we're going to see in class is there's a special exponential function that sits in between those two, in between these two. It's going to have some special properties. And that's the one we're primarily going to be using. All right, but in any case, for exponential functions, we have some nice laws that, algebraic laws that we can use to help simplify things down or, or rewrite expressions. So let's look at these properties. And some of these we've probably seen before. <clears throat> so the first four here, these tell us what to do if we have the same base. So if we have two exponential functions with the same base. So if we have b raised to the x times b raised to the y, what happens is this multiplication here between these two different exponential terms becomes addition inside the exponent. So if we're multiplying exponential terms, we add the exponents then, and we can combine them into a single exponential. This only works if the base term is the same, though. And then same thing for division, or similar for division. If we have two different exponential terms, but they both have the same base, what do we do? We subtract the exponents. So it goes from division um, between the entire exponential pieces to just subtraction in the exponent. Um, and then, you know, we've, we've seen these before. So if we have b raised to negative x, well, we can get rid of that negative and do a reciprocal. And if we have multiple exponents like this, so if we have b raised to the power y, and then that whole thing raised to the power x, well, when we have multiple exponents, we just multiply the exponents. The last two, these ones are kind of like distribution or factoring. So we can kind of factor exponents or distribute exponents. Um, and these ones work if the exponent is the same. So if we notice, in each of these, the base terms can be different, but the exponents are the same. So here, x, x, and x, 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 and x. So the exponents are all the same. So what do these properties say? Well, you kind of read them two ways. So if we have an exponential term a rate raised to the power x times b raised to the power x, we can think of this as like factoring off that common exponent. So it becomes a times b, and then that whole thing just raised to the power x. Or if we have division of those same expon exponentials, well, we can think of this as factoring off that common exponent and then we just divide the base terms. So it'd be a over b, and then that whole thing raised to the power x. Or you could think of these more like distribution. So we could say if we, if we kind of go in this direction, if we have something being raised to a power, well, if we have multiplication, we can distribute that exponent. And if we have division, we can also distribute. Um, so just a, a word of warning there. These distribution ones don't work for addition and subtraction. So a plus b raised to the x is not the same thing as a raised to the x plus b raised to the x. And same thing with subtraction. So we can't distribute exponents over subtraction either. It only works for multiplication and division. All right, so let's try an example to just use some of these properties. So we're going to look at example one. And what we're going to do is we're going to use these exponent laws to rewrite each of these expressions in the form 2 raised to the power kx. So we want to try to rewrite these kind of algebraic expressions as a single exponential with base 2. All right, so let's start with the first one. And there's, you know, different ways you can go about doing this. So there's not one set approach. Um, so this is just going to be one way to do it. 
So we have 2 raised to the 4x times 2 raised to the negative x, and then that whole thing being raised to the 1 half power. So we have options, but I'm going to start inside the parentheses here. So I'm going to start by simplifying those terms, just the terms that are inside the parentheses. And when we look at this, what do we have? We have two base 2 exponential terms, and we're multiplying them together. So in this case, we have the same base. Two exponentials with the same base, and we're multiplying. So let's go up to our list and see if there's any properties we can use. And there is. So if we have the same base with maybe different exponents, and we're multiplying, what we can do is we can consolidate them into one single exponential, and we add the exponents together. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to add these exponents. So property 1 allows us to rewrite this as just a single exponential base 2, and then we add the exponents. So 4x plus negative x. And then that whole thing is still going to be raised to the power 1 half. So, so far we're just working with that stuff inside the parentheses. And if we simplify that down, 4x plus negative x is just going to be 3x. So we have 2 raised to the 3x. And then that whole thing raised to the 1 half power. All right, so now we want to simplify further. And what we notice, again, we want to think back to our properties here. And what we notice is that now we have a single exponential, but it's being raised to multiple exponents. So we have base 2 getting raised to the power 3x, and then that whole thing getting raised to the power 1 half. So when we have multiple exponents, we're in this situation up here with property 4. So property 4 allows us to multiply the exponents. So if we multiply that in, 3 times 1 half is 3 over 2. So we end up with 3 over 2 times x up there in the exponent. So for property 1, we added the exponents. And for property 4, we multiplied the exponents. Now you don't have to worry about memorizing which property number is which. You just need to be able to work with these. So when we're multiplying base terms, we end up adding the exponents. And when we have multiple exponents, we end up multiplying the exponents. All right, so let's just answer the question. So we wanted to rewrite this expression in the form 2 raised to the power kx. So let's just compare what we have and what we wanted. So if we compare, we wanted, not e, oh, I spoiled it. <laughs> we had 2 raised to the power kx. That's the form that we want. And what we got was 2 raised to the 3 halves power x. So if we compare, the constant k is just the number in front of the x. So in this case, what we're seeing is that k is equal to 3 halves. All right, let's try one more of these. So let's look at the second one. 10 over x raised to the power 5x, or 10 raised to the power x divided by 5 to the power x. And again, we want to get this into the form of base 2. So we have some options here. But if we kind of look at what we have, we have two exponentials, and the bases are different, but the exponents are the same. So when we have the same exponent, if we go back up to our list, which property would be applicable? Well, same exponent. We're not multiplying exponentials here, but we are dividing. And so we have this property 6 that says if we have two different exponentials, but they have the same exponent, well, we can essentially factor off that common exponent. And 
do the division on just the base terms. So how would that look here? Well, we're going to factor off that common exponent, and then we'll have 10 over 5 inside the parentheses. And a lot of times we think of this kind of going in the opposite direction. So a lot of times we think of distributing this x to the 10 into the 5. And we go back. We could go back there. <clears throat> All right, so we, we did that. So that was property 6. Well, now let's actually do the division. And 10 divided by 5 is 2. So we get 2 raised to the power x. And we're there. We wanted to get it into base 2 form. So now to figure out the k value, we can just compare. So we wanted 2 raised to the kx. And what we got was 2 raised to the x. And so if we compare in this case, k and the number in front of x is the k value. And we don't normally write it, but it's there. There's a hidden exponent of 1, or a, a hidden multiple of 1 there in front of the x. So this is telling us the k value is 1. OK. And once we get to examples, we're going to see the kind of the significance of these k values. Tells, tells us something about the, the growth rate of our exponential functions, or decay rate. Um, all right, so I think that's a good place to, to break for now. So we'll practice more of these algebraic properties in class. And then we'll also start to look at that special function which we call the natural exponential function. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye.